stocking doesn't have to be complicated. It's just really about getting the pieces wet. All your knitting should have a bath before you declare it finished. But this in particular you want to. And it's going to be a gentle bath here. I will just soak it in lukewarm water. Let it soak for a good 20 minutes or so, because particularly if you're using wool, it takes that long to soak up the water. And don't be too vigorous with it. Just really let it lie, because if it is a pilly yarn or a gentle yarn, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to make the surface look any rougher. So we'll let it soak. And then we'll carefully squeeze it out. And what I do is, to get the moisture out, roll them in a towel. You can squeeze very hard. If it's a big piece, I stand on it on the bathroom floor typically. And then shape it. Ah, I'm not in the business of pinning these things. They generally don't need pinning. And just lay it flat to dry. So that bath just smooths it all out. It makes it lie flatter. It opens up your stitch work and it makes everything much more even. Once it's dry, we weave the ends in. This is where, again, a multiple plied yarn can be helpful because what you can do is split the plies and weave in the plies separately because the challenge with a bulky yarn is that you've got bulky ends. If you're working with a single like this, and I adore these single yarns, we have to think about what our strategy is going to be. Um, a darning needle with a nice big eye, of course, or indeed your crochet hook can be helpful for this again. And if we're working on stockinette stitch, and I always fold the yarn over the eye there and squeeze it through. And what I do here is I will just sort of a, a lazy duplicate stitch method up and down two columns so that I'm really securing it. And when it's wiggling up and down in a couple of different directions, it's a lot less likely to wiggle its way out. And before I commit, before I trim this off, now this is a sticky wool that is not a superwash wool, so I can be a little bit more relaxed about it because it is going to felt in over time. If you're using a superwash wool or a man-made fiber or a cotton or something that doesn't felt, you'll need to weave in more rather than less. And I would say a good four inches of yarn to make sure it's completely secure. And before I commit, before I trim that off, I'm just always in the habit of flipping it over to make sure that it's not showing and make sure it's not puckering the work any. And so there what we've got is it's tidy and it's really not made anything significantly more bulky. And at that point, I will just trim. So typically a piece that's worked in stockinette stitch has a right side and a wrong side, so I will weave into the wrong side. Or this is why I love things with seams too. I love weaving ends into seams because they'll never show. With garter stitch though, um, what you've got to consider is that the piece is probably reversible. So let's weave in in a way that it's not going to show. And this is where I use the ridges. The ridges are fantastic because the piece accordions down and I can hide in the ridges. Again, get my tail here and I'm going to pick one leg of the stitch of the V that's tucked right in the very edge there. And just pull this through and when the piece is accordioning down, compressing down, you really can't see that end. And I will go in one direction and then I will go in another direction in the other ridge. So I'll come up through here and I'll pick one. And really I think the most important step when you're weaving in bulky like this is to just look at it and make sure you're happy with it. Now I can see that end, um, you can probably see that end too, but you know what, when that's being worn and that's compressed down, that looks fine and you, other than the tail, you wouldn't know the end was in there. The other thing to consider of course is you can weave into your cast on or bind off edge and what I would do there is I would essentially follow the path 
of the bees on the edge there. And so here, what I'm doing, and again, it's a little bit visible, but my attitude towards this is sort of pragmatic. There are things that you could do to make this look absolutely perfect and absolutely invisible, but honestly, getting the ends secure to me is the most important thing because chances are you're giving this as a gift and somebody is not necessarily going to know how to weave them back in themselves. So you want to make sure that they are absolutely secure. And so there, really not visible, really quite tidy. And here, same deal. And again, when you're happy with it, trim those off. And if this garter stitch piece is indeed reversible, really not visible on that side. 